Okay, hi everyone. Let's spend a moment and explore how we would put a seasonal forecast together. In this case, we're going to assume it's sales. Okay, and we're going to assume they gave you a couple years worth of data, year one and year two. That's all you have. Okay, so they gave you the months for year one, they gave you the months for the second year. It slides off the screen, I'm not going to go down. And they gave you the actual sales. So here's the actual sales for year one. Actual sales for year two, you know, is down here, okay? Or actually through December, right? From there to there. All right. So to come up with a seasonal forecast, the first thing you want to do is come up with the regression information. And in another video, I've shown you how you could do regression by graphing and then just putting the equation on the line. The equation of the line and put it on the graph. But in this approach, if you're using Excel, you can actually calculate the A and B needed. Now remember, a regression, a regression gets you an equation for a line. And sometimes it's given as Y equals AX plus B. Other times you see it written as, let me just put it in here, parentheses, as Y equals MX plus B, right? where M is the slope of the line and B is the point where it crosses the Y-intercept in the form of A plus BX. A is the point where it crosses the Y-intercept. B becomes the slope, okay? And again, the independent variable is always X and Y. Well, in this situation, you've got to remember that the independent variable is just a time series. So you need to replace January, February, and March of the first year with one, two, three, and you just keep going up, right? So you're going to get all the numbers through 24. All right. Now, you could use Excel's intercept formula and slope to come up with the A and B. So what's the intercept? Well, we hit F of X, and it'll, put up, it'll call up this formula here. Let me put this off to the side. It says, put in the known Ys. Well, the known Ys would be E10 to E33. So the known Ys are this range right in here, right? Those are the known Ys. In other words, those are the known dependent variables. We have a history of sales that go from E10 to E33. Okay, let me escape out of that. All right, so that's what you put into the first parameter, the first yeah, it's looking for two parameters. When you use the intercept, it wants the known Ys and then the known Xs. Well, the known Xs are simply your time series that you enter, 1, 2, 3, through 24. Okay, once you've entered that correctly, let me hit the F2 again, call that up. Now, where did it put it on the screen? Um, oh, I think I have to hit the F of X here. Yeah, and then it, call, it comes up. Okay, once you have that, it can give you the answer. So it comes back with 248 point, uh, 246.8841 with this particular data set. Okay, uh, let me ignore that error. It's just telling us that something's different from what it was expecting in an adjacent cell. All right, so now I know what A is. So I know what the Y-intercept is in the formula Y equals A plus BX. Now I need to calculate B, which is the slope of the line. And we do that with the formula equals slope. And if I hit F2, bring it up, You'll see it wants the exact same parameters. It wants to know, give me the history you have of what the dependent variable was, right? And give me the history of what you know the independent variable was. So this time we're giving it the exact same range, E10 to E33 and D10 to D33. Now you may be asking, why are we doing D when they gave us months? Because you had to turn it into a time series. So just number it sequentially. All right, so with that information, if you simply wanted to know a projection for, say, um, I don't know, February of year three, you would then just plug in that 26 there into X, right? So you would just say 26, which is your B, right? That's your, excuse me, 26 represents your X, then multiply it times 
1.01609 and add A to it. And that would be your projection. Okay. So if you were looking for month 26, which would be February of year three, right? Year 24 was December, 25 would be January. You would say for 20, for, you know, for that, that month, which would have been February, you're simply going to say equal the A value, 246, plus 26 times the B value. And that would have been your projection. You'd say, oh, forecast is going to be 273.212. You know, All right, now, I'm going to eliminate that, or actually, I'll just leave that there as an example. So the next thing you need to do is deal with seasonality. All right, so what do we do? We're going to use the regression and calculate the regression forecast for whatever periods we're interested in. Okay, so I came up with 273.212 for period 26. If we go down to period 26, we should see 273.212. There it is, 273.21. Now they're only carrying it to two decimal places, and that's okay. Okay, now I slid back up to the top again, or let me slide all the way up to the top so you can see where I was. So now what you want to do to determine the seasonal forecast of sales, you have to take A divided by F, and you need to do that for whatever period you're interested in. So if I take A divided by F, right, I get the action, and in this case, A stands for the actual sales. And I'm going to divide it by my regression forecast. Okay, so essentially we're calculating the ratio of the history for that time period to what the regression forecast would have predicted. And when we do that, we get a seasonal ratio. And you would do that for, you know, whatever period you need. Now, then to calculate the seasonal forecast of sales, what you do is you multiply the regression forecast that you already calculated here, right, that 247, and you multiply it times the seasonal ratio. And that's all there is to this. So if you wanted to calculate the seasonal forecast of sales for period 26, I'll slide all the way down. Well, actually, let me lock this in. Okay, now I've locked the pane now, so when I slide down, we're still going to see the top part, okay? I'm going to slide on down. And if you are interested in coming up with the seasonal forecast for period 26, you'd come over to 26 and you'd say, ah, well, there's where we calculated what the regression forecast was. And in this case, you know, we're using the internet and the slope approach. Like I said, you could have come up with these numbers uh, using the graphical approach that I described. And then we calculate the seas seasonal ratio. So what are we doing here? Well, we're taking the actual sales divided by F. All right, now. Okay, now you don't have actual sales for year three. You weren't given that information. So what do we do? We take G11 plus G23. That happens to be February sales for year one and February sales for year two and we divide it by two. So what are we calculating here? We're calculating an average. So because we don't have an actual sales, we use the average of the data we do have. And they chose to use that by saying G11 plus G23 divided by two. You could have used Excel's average function, which would you would say equal average left paren G11, uh, comma G23, close paren. That would work too. But adding the two and dividing it by two is, is will get you the same result. So now that I have a seasonal ratio that is calculated a little, little bit differently, I do have the factors I need to come up with the seasonal forecast of sales for period 26. Okay, so that's how you come up with a seasonal forecast of sales or a seasonal forecast for whatever you happen to be um, uh, forecasting. I hope you found this helpful.